Hi everyone, Alex Tardy here, National Weather Service. No April Fool's joking. Two cold storms coming down to impact Southern California with April showers and low snow levels. Here's a photo that was taken uh, back in March along the Cajon Pass when showers were passing through. So our water year, uh, we are about half full, 50% of normal in Southwest California, still missing several inches of rain precipitation. And so it looks like this year overall, we're gonna fall short, even though the water year runs all the way through the summer. Here are some of the numbers. Take a look at the climate site closest to you. Uh, so you may wonder why there aren't more sites. Uh, Collecting data that's continuous for years and years and years is quite difficult. Uh, these locations here do qualify as long-term data collections. So this year, um, much less than last year and even less than two years ago. Now we did have a wet March. So March was much above average almost twice as wet as normal across San Diego County. And with that, temperatures were below average as shown here. Now temperatures for the water year though, with the dry came the warm. So our mountains and our deserts have been much above normal. Why are the coastal areas actually normal or below? Well, the colder ocean temperatures that have been persistent has helped there. But when these dry, warm patterns, they don't penetrate that far inland. You can see how far it penetrates. It doesn't make it over the mountain spine. So our mountains and our deserts in this dry winter have been really mild, warmer than normal. We are looking at precipitation coming through Wednesday and then again on Thursday. The green shaded areas are where the most significant and repeated rain showers will be occurring. Of course, that'll be snow above 4,000 feet. These areas uh, through Wednesday and then again on Thursday, will have the most likelihood of seeing significant, uh, brief but significant precipitation as the showers roll through. So the showers are coming in from the west northwest and they run into these mountain slopes and that's why those areas are the wettest. Across the state, pretty evenly distributed precipitation, uh, generally just beneficial, but some good snows uh, for early April. The storm is coming from the north. Um, right now it's over central Northern California as showed on this satellite image. Those enhanced tops, those colorful enhancements mean there's a lot of ice and heavier precipitation inside of those clouds. The storm I said is coming from the north. The cold front is already through moving into Mexico right now. So the cold air is in place and the coldest or colder air will be coming down Wednesday morning and then it stays in place through Thursday. The RadarWeather.gov shows what's going on as well. Under those clouds, there's the precipitation. You can monitor the precipitation too as it expands tonight through Wednesday and again on Thursday at RadarWeather.gov. The highlights are back-to-back -back storms. You probably won't notice the difference between most of them because even between rain showers, the sun will come out. There is an isolated threat of a thunderstorm which could have heavy rain. Small hail is possible and then have very low snow levels. So keep that in mind of traveling into the mountains. The precipitation will be focused along the foothills in the mountains, localized significant snow in the mountains. Uh, winds, they'll continue especially through tonight and Wednesday morning in the deserts. Thursday precipitation looks to be a little bit more widespread. Now, then a significant warm up, dry and much above average building into next week. The snow levels, so we're going to be on a roller coaster here with very low snow levels with a few inches of snow accumulating above 4,000 feet. 
The rainfall rates, most areas will see light rainfall rates, but there will be pockets of heavier rain along the foothills, as we talked about, and parts of the Inland Empire. And those areas could see around a quarter of an inch or even a little higher per hour in those downbursts. We will be monitoring burn scars. The good news is that the bridge and line will be largely snowfall that reduces the runoff and the impacts. Speaking of snow, we're looking at snow through Wednesday as shown here. Uh, this is for storm number one with one to four inches of snow up around 4,000 feet and above. Now, when we go into storm number two, kind of a repeat uh, with generally one to three inches of snow. So you can see overall, you could have as much as seven or eight inches of snow up around 7,000 feet. Now, the temperatures with that snow, so they're going to be cold, not getting above 40 in our mountain communities on Wednesday, not getting above 60 or maybe just barely 60 along the coast in those breaks of sun. The precipitation in storm number one, well, it's really confined to San Diego County and then up along the foothills into Big Bear region. So much of the LA basin really doesn't see anything other than a sprinkle and the sun will be breaking out a lot of times. On Thursday, it's a little more widespread. So areas that were bone dry or just sprinkles could see some wetting rain, even though it's still brief. And then similar repeat in precipitation across the foothills and mountains, especially San Diego County, but also San Gabriel and San Bernardino Mountains uh, on Thursday. The wind will continue, like I said, mainly through early Wednesday with some strong winds, keep in mind, impacting our mountain passes and our desert floor in Borrego Springs all the way up through Palm Springs and quite breezy over our open waters as well and our high deserts. The weather pattern is coming down from the north directly. So storm one comes directly down from Western Canada into Southern California. That's why we get such cold air. Uh, and then storm two is right behind it and fills right in, keeping the cold air in place and the additional precipitation on Thursday. Rapid warming and drying develops this weekend into next week. Upper level ridge of high pressure, so that is a dome of warm air, uh, replaces all this cold Canadian air that comes through. You can see how cold it will be on Wednesday. Compared to normal, the coldest region compared to averages is Southern California. Now, when you look into next week, the opposite, the warmest area, and this is why I talked about a roller coaster ride and spring weather, the warmest temperatures compared to average are right in Southwest California next week. And the latest outlook reflects that much above normal, high probability uh, for above normal temperatures and not just California, but much of the West. And that continues into mid-April, as shown here in the two-week outlook. If you do happen to get a heavy shower and small hail, um, the difference between hail and grapple, so hail is hard and a piece of ice, you just pick it up and you can tell, it'll melt quick, um, but it's a hard piece of ice. It feels like a, a small rock. Grapple is soft, it'll pop, it's like dipping dots or or even feta cheese, so it's soft um, and it won't feel hard. Grapple typically occurs with temperatures in the 20s and 30s, whereas hail occurs at any temperature. So it could be 45, it could be 85. You could also use coins to help you distinguish between the size of the precipitation types. A lot of times they looked the same uh, on this particular storm here, both occurred. The mountains were 29 degrees with snow grapple, which is snow pellets. It's an actual large snowflake or more than one snowflake that's encased in a thin layer of ice because at some part in the cloud, uh, there was some super cooled water, meaning water that wasn't frozen. 
and that encased it as the particle gets thrown up and down. Now, hail is different. Um, it can grow at the expense of any type of moisture uh, in the cloud, even if it's liquid and not super cooled. So hail uh, will be a hard piece of ice. It may originally have been a snowflake, but it's growing at the expense of the cloud, the moisture in the cloud. It doesn't need to be cold. Um, it just needs to be a tall enough cloud um, with temperatures below freezing in the upper part of the cloud. So at the surface where you're standing, it can be in the 40s, it can be in the 50s, it could even be in the 80s or 90s if you had a big enough storm and you still get hail. We had a viewer uh, and weather spotter, thank you, out of Escondido area when this cell moved through. This was back on uh, March, March 13th, and the heavy shower moved through and left a coating of hard pieces of ice. Here are some resources that you can check out. Um, including our GIS information pages uh, as linked to the top, or you can monitor the rain and the wind yourself at that hazard viewer link. All right, everyone. We also post information on X and Facebook. Be safe out there. And remember, if you're going to the mountains, bring your chains.